Hi everyone, so in this video I am going to be reviewing the Picasso tab by the company Simbans or Simbans, I'm not sure where the emphasis is there. And basically this is a budget Android tablet. It includes a pen and you can draw on it and it is around the $200 range depending on if you're um, Canadian or US dollars. On the Canadian Amazon page it is $250 Canadian dollars. And on the US Amazon, it is 219 US dollars. So this is an extremely cheap price for a tablet, especially one that you can draw on. And I'm going to be talking about how it feels to draw on this tablet as an artist and would I recommend it. And the first thing I want to do is I just want to read you off the specs that they have listed on their website to kind of save you the trouble from looking that up yourself. And then I'm going to be giving my own thoughts. First of all, apologies for my voice. I got a cold right when I planned to record this and I don't want to delay it anymore, so I'm gonna do this. So the tablet isn't, it's not extremely fast, but it's not slow. It feels all right. Processor is a quad core. The screen is 10.1 inches and the resolution is 1280 by 800. So that's less than HD. It's noticeable that it's not full HD. The screen isn't the nicest screen, but it's also not the worst screen. It's very, um, you kind of get used to it. It was something I was kind of surprised about at first at how fuzzy and sort of pixelated the screen looked, but for this price, uh, it's kind of what I expected. It has 32 gigabytes of storage and you can upgrade this with another 32 gigabyte of micro SD card um, to expand the storage. Two gigabytes of RAM DDR3. It's Android Nougat 7. Um, the cameras are two megapixels front and five megapixels back. They're not really the best cameras. I wouldn't get this tablet for the cameras. They're very um, low-end quality. It's the same quality as my old phone, which um, would probably look all right in the broad daylight, but if you're taking pictures indoors, it's not gonna look too great. It comes with Autode Autodesk Sketchbook Pro installed. It's not my favorite program, but if you like that, then it comes with it. The port, it has a mini HDMI, a USB-C for charging. Um, audio and a micro SD card slot and you have to use a little pin to take out the um, card slot it looks like and that must be where you expand the storage and it actually comes with a case and a screen protector pre-installed the case is fairly nice I like the design of it it allows you to prop it up um, comes with a tablet the pen um, the case has a US charger um, a Europe and different Europe adapters a UK and Europe adapters a USB-C Type-C cable, and a user manual. So that's what's in the actual box. So the screen protector that comes pre-installed is um, glossy. I assume you can peel it off and put one on. Um, you can probably put a different one on if you can find one that's uh, being sold. And it says on the website here, it comes with one year of warranty. Also, something else I wanted to mention was the battery life, because um, I feel like that's also important. And it lasts for, for pretty long. It's definitely... Um, Again, it's kind of like mid-range, like it's not, um, it's also a fresh tablet and like the newer something is, the better the battery life. But so far, my best guess would be about 10, 10 hours-ish of battery life. It had a full charge yesterday and I used it for about four to five hours, um, just playing around with it and uh, watching tutorials on the different um, drawing programs and just... Um, like with, with the screen on. The screen takes up pretty much most of the battery. And then today I used it for about the same amount of time, um, which adds up to about about 10-ish hours. And I still have, it says five hours left, but it's probably more like two hours left or one hour because it's at 16% now after using it all that time. So it's a pretty decent battery life for the price. Here's just a few uh, words from Simbans themselves. Their drawing tablet is the world's first multi-purpose drawing tablet within the $200 range compared to other tablets that are much more expensive. Their target audience are mostly students or beginners in digital drawing. A student can learn digital illustration and can also use the tablet for school or work purposes. The pen has 1,024 levels of pressure and the tablet offers palm rejection when the pen is brought close to the tablet. So those are some of their points. As far as the palm rejection, I'll talk about that later, um, How if it works or not. This tablet was sent to me by the company to review, but all the opinions will be my own honest opinions. Um, I want to give you my full 
honest thoughts of how this tablet is when it comes to drawing and just the overall quality for price. So like I said, my first impression was that the screen is a little bit fuzzy. It's not the clearest. Um, you can kind of see the pixels a little bit if you look close. When it comes to drawing, when, when, you're, when you're zoomed out on the canvas and you're drawing a line, um, you can see the, the pixely edge and you're not sure how it's actually going to look once it's displayed on a higher resolution screen. That's kind of a downfall. The tablet itself is noticeably slower than um, the iPad Pro that I have, but the iPad Pro is extremely fast and is a very high tier sort of item. So um, you can't really expect a $200 tablet to be lightning speed like the iPad. The color display looks pretty nice, pretty accurate colors. I'm just comparing some of my artwork from my iPad to the Picasso tab. The iPad does seem to display colors a little bit more vividly, especially when it comes to like reds and purples I'm noticing just from looking at my artwork side by side. But it's overall um, pretty accurate when it comes to like, because I know with my with my computer, the, the yellows are always a bit more green, but I'm not seeing um, those kind of problems on this tablet. So it's a pretty, it's a pretty decent color accuracy. The main downfall is just the resolution of the screen. So the pen, it comes with a pen. It takes a quadruple A battery. I've never even used that kind of battery before. It comes with two of them, so you don't have to go out and find one yourself. It comes with um, one battery you just pop into the pen and then a spare one that you can use to replace it once it runs out. So it's a battery powered pen and the pressure comes from the tip of the pen. It's kind of um, a springy feel, so the nib of the pen is, is kind of on a spring, so that's where the pressure comes from. I know that they sell replacement nibs, so if your nib runs out, you can buy some new nibs. It doesn't come with any replacement nibs. It has a little, um, a little clip on the end of it, so you can put it in a pocket or clip it on the end of the case or a notebook, and it also can, um, it magnetically attaches to the edge of the tablet, which is um, a really great feature. That's actually something I was really happy to see it having because the iPad I have does not have that feature and it's kind of annoying when your pen kind of rolls away from the tablet. So I think that's a really great bonus that it can actually clip to the, to the side of the tablet. When it comes to drawing, there is a noticeable parallax and I haven't been able to find a way to recalibrate it. Um, there's no obvious software included that um, allows you to control the pen settings and the parallax um, I don't know if it differs from device to device um, but the way the way it is on mine is um, depending on how your screen is oriented the cursor um, leans a little bit to the left of where you're drawing you can always flip the tablet around so that the cursor is on the opposite side from whatever hand you draw. So if you're left-handed, you can flip it one way. If you're right-handed, you can flip it the other way so that you can actually see the cursor. The parallax is a bit annoying and it's hard to get precise lines when you're drawing. The response time is also um, a little bit delayed. So if you're doing a lot of quick, fast strokes, they're not going to come out very fast. Oh, I should say the outside of the pen is um, a metal, which feels pretty nice in the hand. It's a nice, cool, light. It has some, some weight to it um, because of the battery and the pen, so it's the pen itself is comfortable to hold, for me anyway. There's also quite a bit of jitter, which is which was also one of the turnoffs for me, and the slower you draw, the more you see the jitter, and basically this means that the line that you're drawing isn't smooth. The cursor kind of um, jumps around as you're creating the line, so you get this jagged appearance, but if you use the stabilizer that comes with some art programs, you can kind of uh, smooth out the jitter a little bit and it helps just a little bit and um, another thing when it comes to drawing is the palm rejection if the program doesn't have the uh, the ability to turn off um, touch so that only the pen acts as the drawing tool then the palm of your hand is going to leave a lot of marks on the canvas um, you're gonna find you have little dots where you rested your hand on the screen so try to wear a glove or put or turn on the palm rejection or um, or turn off the touch so that you can't draw with your finger or your hand. It only takes a pen, um, and then you can overcome that problem. It is it is something you can overcome, but it's something you gotta you gotta know about because on the iPad I don't find myself drawing with the palm of my hand. It just knows when my hand is on the screen. It can tell the difference between um, my finger or my the palm of my hand. I just said palm of my hand many times. In the last like minute but I did test out um, a bunch of programs I tested out Ibis Paint X Autodesk Sketchbook uh, Medibang Paint Artflow and Adobe Sketch and the pressure works with all of these programs 
Um, unfortunately, you can't get Procreate on Android because it's a Apple, it's an Apple software, but actually a lot of these programs have more options than Procreate does because Procreate doesn't even have a text tool. It still needs a lot of work, but I love the brushes in Procreate and that's why I use it for uh, pretty much everything on my iPad. And the iPad I'm comparing it to is the iPad Pro 10 inch one. So the screen size is actually uh, very similar. It's a little bit smaller, but I don't really mind the size because it's, it's good for portability. It's definitely a little bit lighter than the iPad because it's a little bit smaller. Now, my overall thoughts when it comes to drawing and would I recommend this? In terms of file management and how to export your artwork and all that stuff, it does come with a file manager, which you can use. And each art program I installed has its own folder, except for Ibis Paint doesn't have one. The only thing is that you can't really see which image is which until you, you click on the thumbnail and like there, there aren't um, thumbnails for each image. All you see is a little generic like picture icon, so you can't tell what it is until you actually open it. The stuff I saved with Ibis Paint showed up in the folder called pictures, so it's a little bit... Um, cumbersome using the the file manager the android file manager so using a cloud um just like putting everything on a cloud would be easier in my opinion because i just use that anyway and that way you don't have to email it to yourself it's just on the internet easy to access from all your devices that's just the way i do it so would i recommend this tablet um i wouldn't recommend it for if you're looking for a really good drawing experience i wouldn't recommend this tablet but if, if you're looking for an Android tablet um, that happens to have a stylus that you can draw on it if you want to, then I would recommend it because it's $200. And if you're a complete beginner with digital art and you also are looking to get an Android tablet, then this might be the product for you. It's hard to get accurate lines, but it's not impossible to draw on. And it's a whole lot better than using your finger on a screen or some generic phone stylus. It's definitely a lot better because the pen has... Um, 1,024 levels of pressure, so it's it's pressure sensitive, which regular um, styluses aren't, like the ones that are basically just another finger, because um, because the tip of the stylus is so is so big. It's it's a decent drawing experience for the price. Another thing I notice with the screen is that if you have a solid color on the screen, you can kind of see these um, horizontal lines across the screen, which is just part of the display. Apple currently has an iPad that is more around the five hundred dollar range. It's the new twenty eighteen iPad that supports the Apple Pencil, so it's not an iPad Pro. Um, but it does support the pencil and that still feels really really nice to draw on accurate lines very responsive a little bit of a parallax But it's really not that big of a deal um, That might be more in people's price range But if you can't afford something that's in the $500 range and you want something for more like casual drawing casual sketching that you can take with you that isn't going to take tons of your money then and if you're just getting into digital art this might be a good option, especially if you plan to just do sketching and really loose work because it, it is hard to get accurate lines because of the parallax and because of the response time. Um, but once you get used to the way it feels and the way it handles, it, it's pretty amazing that it's only $200 and it has pen pressure sensitivity and it displays colors fairly nicely and you can actually make art on it for this price point. It's definitely a budget tablet um, with budget results, but if that's what you're looking for, then this might be perfect for you. This could also be useful for complete beginners in digital art and maybe even um, young artists, young beginners. This could be their first kind of like step into digital art if you also are looking to get them a tablet or if you're looking to get yourself a tablet, this could be a good one because you can also draw on it. And since it's Android, you can download um, anything that that's offered in the Google Play store, any app. I really hope you enjoyed this review. Um, even if you're not considering getting a tablet, sometimes it's fun to just watch reviews of different gadgets, especially cheap gadgets, to see how they perform. So I hope this was interesting. And if you're actually looking into getting this, um, I hope this helped you make a decision. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.